Hello, my name is Henry Emfrey, and this is my visual presentation regarding Chapter 1 of How Language is Learned. Um, I've done a graphic organizer about the different uh, ideas and theories about how languages develop, and I'm just going to go through these right quick. But the first chapter starts off saying that... Um, Part of a child's language development starts out with the uh, in when the children are in their infant stage. Um, when they start, uh, they start out as crying first. Then second, they uh, develop auditory discrimination and sound differentiation, where they're able to um, judge the difference between sounds. And then children start making uh, meaningful sounds and. Uh, Around the age of two, uh, children, uh, that's when children are uh, beginning to produce words. And then, um, I say from uh, two to, from, from, t uh, from the age of two, they continue from producing words to making simple sentences. And then they move to a stage where they realize predictable patterns and develop the generalizations about the language that they that they've been observing all this time, and eventually they uh, they come to a point which uh, they're able to start making conversations with people, and that's uh usually the uh, the time they start having conversations is I uh, say around maybe four, maybe four years old, uh, I guess according to the chapter, and then um uh, then then there's uh, child, uh, children's school year developments. Uh, I, I say even maybe before, should be either maybe even before or in after, but I guess generally um, in this in the children's school year developments, uh, that's when uh, children uh, develop their further develop their reading. Um, they. Um, are able to determine multiple meanings a little bit better. Like, uh, for instance, in the chapter, there was a part where somebody said, "Let's propose a toast," and then, and the child listening to that conversation thought that the person meant, "Let's propose so uh, the the breakfast toast," or, you know, the, the piece of bread instead of uh, what the uh, person truly meant by that that phrase, and. And then uh, during the school development years, uh, you know, children learn uh, learn jokes and learn different registers, like and and when to use different registers. For example, uh, they might say, "Hey, how you doing?" versus "Hey, how you doing?" Uh, you know, you know, different registers have different meaning, and children learn that. And children learn ethics, um, more of uh, differences between right and wrong and how to function society and, and start learning more advanced forms of that. So that's that's that part. But there are exceptions. Um, some children learn faster than others and others learn slower at a slower uh, pace. And the, these exceptions have more to do with children's cognitive ability. Uh, for example, if uh, a child has a learning disability or autism, well, they might learn a little slower than um, regular kids, uh, their, their classmates. And the other exception could be um, the idea that uh, um, a child might be bilingual and might be learning uh, more than one language at the same time, so that could also contribute to um, how fast I mean, could could determine how fast a, a, a child is able to um, uh, to learn a language in their overall language development. Next, we have the um, various. Uh, uh, theorists that were uh, mentioned in the chapter. Um, first, we have the uh, behavioralists. 
in the, uh, who was named, the main one was uh, B.F. Skinner, who uh, deemed that children learn by reinforcement, imitation, repetition, and practice. And the next one we have is the innatist, uh, Noam Chomsky, who says that humans are biologically programmed for language and that children don't need to be taught language. In children's environment, that is the availability of people who speak the child's language, uh, is what influences the child's abilities. And Noam Chomsky came up with this idea of the universal grammar which helps prevents children from making grammar mistakes and, and I, I I personally believe this uh, this this one one idea I believe I, I do believe that uh, humans have been uh, uh, given uh, at least uh, have some kind of innate ability to uh, decipher languages uh, it's something that was very, uh, built into our subconscious that uh, helps uh, helps us learn language uh, Especially when within, within specific times when we're exposed to them uh, 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 a little more. I mean, that's just that's what I think. And next, um, there is P.J. the uh, interactionalist P.J. who studied children's cognitive understanding of size, appearance, quantity, quantities, weight, and perception. And said children acquire language and cognitive understanding through physical interaction with their environment. And the other interact interactionalist was Vygalsky, who uh, said language develops through social interaction. And he uh, he came up with this idea of this zone of proximal development, which says uh, which relates to how individuals could improve when being helped. Therefore, he, uh, he he believed that language is help is is developed faster when uh, children have a little bit of help. Um, I guess to compare and contrast to, uh, these um, these different theorists, I, I, I'm saying that uh, they all um, uh, believe that the environment has something to do with uh, with how language is developing. For example, uh, B.F. Skinner, uh, he mentions reinforcement. Well, where do reinforcement come from? Uh, reinforcement comes from, you know, something, somebody or some something in the environment that reinforces, um, you know, what what children are, uh, the, uh, uh, the right and wrong that children are doing, and, uh, that it reinforce certain behaviors, it makes it, it either encourages or discourages um, children's uh, what. Uh, children's development. Uh, so that, that has to do with the environment. And Chomsky um, says um, um, uh, it has to do with um, children inter interacting with uh, people in the environment. So, um, you know, that, that, and then, um, and then Piaget um, mentions uh, children interacting with their physical environment, the things in their physical environment. So uh, that's another environment. And um, and then in Vygotsky's zone of proximal development, um, uh, uh, um, deals with help. Uh, and where does help come from? It comes from someone or something in the in the environment that helps helps uh, language development along. So that's that's how these guys compare. But uh, uh, um, some contrasts, um, I guess, uh, can be between. I, one of the biggest countries I found was between uh, Vygotsky and Chomsky. Uh, like I said uh, before, Chomsky believes that we don't uh, children don't need much help uh, for uh, learning language, versus Vygotsky, who says you do need some help uh, to learn language, or at least you, need, you do need some help to learn language a little faster. And um, I, I believe that all these. Uh, Theorists are, are correct. Uh, to, um, it's just I just think it's a matter of mixing all of these uh, ideas together, and, uh, and uh, to get a good idea for uh, 
how language development works. At least that's what that's my opinion. So, uh, Bagowski and Piaget were the two internet interactionalists, and one thing that I gather from the chapter is interactionalists believes that technology alone won't help children develop their language. Uh, that's so that's that's what interactionalists uh, believe. I guess based on my interpretation, I'm not sure if I believe that or not. I mean, I, I don't know. I'm not sure if I personally believe that or not because I know I've been studying Chinese and, and learning by myself, and, and I haven't really had any help with that. But that's a different subject. That's that's my opinion. But we're talking about the chapter. Okay. Um, so the next part of the chapter has to do with um, some cross cultural research that was done. And one dimension of the cross-cultural research had to do with how adults speak to children. You know, some um, it says that some uh, yeah, the way adults help children's language development along is uh, sometimes adults have a tendency to speak with a higher pitch, like "Hi, Jim, how are you doing today? Are you ready for dinner?" No, that's that's uh, and um, that's one way. And adults speak at a slower rate with uh, children. Um, uh, adults also have uh, tend to repeat themselves. Um, and adults sometimes have stress on certain words. For example, um, adult might say, "You better get here right now." You know, that's that's one way uh, that uh, adults uh, uh, emphasize certain things that need to be done with children. And finally, they um, adults uh, paraphrase. For example, a children can say, I know eat lunch right now. Uh, but an adult might uh, paraphrase what the child said and say, do you mean you're not going to eat lunch right now? So that's, that's what, how that works, that works. And the other dimension of the... Um, Cross, of the cross-cultural reference has to do with that the book talked about was culture. Now, um, with culture, in some cultures, children, children interact with older siblings who is the caregiver, and in other cultures, adults do not engage in conversations or verbal play with children, at least not that much. Next, um, we have another theorist whose name is uh, Jim Cummings, and I, I put him in the inter, uh, interactionist category too, you know, and along with uh, Piaget and Vygotsky. And Jim Cummings created the Basic Interpersonal Communication Skills, wh whose acronyms is BICS, 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 or I call it BICS. And BICS um, is known to be uh, acquired through social interaction. And the the most common via the most common English words and phrases that are often used by people in their environment, and thus Bix is easier to learn with time. So so in other words, uh, common words like uh, that kids would hear all the time, like like uh, hi, hello, what's up, how are you doing? Those uh, kids will learn those uh, social languages or social phrases, social phrases. Faster than they would learn what uh, what Jim Cummings deemed as cognitive academic language proficiency, or uh, whose acronyms are C A L P, or what I call CALP, which is learned in school and usually consists of infrequent words, for example, science vocabulary, and those and thus could take more time to learn than BICS. For example, so therefore, like, so therefore, um, like I said, children were having a harder time learning academic language. Let's think about it. How, how often do we hear words like photosynthesis, uh, uh, Phrygian mode, Dorian mode, uh, uh, chromaticism? Uh, so that's that's what Jim Cummings said. It would take a, a longer time for children to develop to learn and grasp those words than it would social languages that they hear every day. And he so thus he goes on to say 
Thus, even though a student may be able to have conversations with their peers in English, it does not mean that students in question mastered has altogether mastered the language. Hence, it does not mean that the same student would be as successful when faced with academic English terms. So I, I think that's that's self-explanatory. Uh, just because you, um, just because a person can speak um, uh, in uh, in their environment and, and have a conversation with people does not mean that they master the language. The next idea deals with uh, the usage base, uh, which uh, says that children need opportunities to have experiences with their target language to learn words, phrases, develop meaning, and and practice. Which again, which is again, just to say, uh, children need to be learn need to be using the language that they're learning, and in order to help them uh, develop. In that language more uh, efficiently. And finally, um, another big point that the chapter was making is the idea that children need to stay in touch with their uh, their home language uh, or their native language. And these things have uh, benefits. Uh, it says. Uh, Individuals maintaining and using their home language can benefit cognitively. Students can learn content in a richer and more comfortable way. It allows students to retain family connections with those who do not speak their target language, and it allows students to communicate cross-culturally and thus could open up future economic opportunities. So that's a. Uh, so therefore, that's a. Uh, that's why the book encourages and book and both the book and research encourages uh, children to stay in touch with their home language because uh, it has all those kind of types of benefits and uh, and it strengthens what children are learning when they're trying to learn uh, uh, something like English. So that's my presentation and I guess the question that I would have is um, is there anybody that uh, agrees or disagrees with any of these uh, theorists down here? Um, uh, like, uh, is anybody that disagree, agrees or disagrees with Vygalski, Piaget, Noam Chomsky, or B.F. Skinner, or or Jim Cummings? And I guess that's all I have. Um, that's my presentation. Thanks.